Hello guys, this is What If Naruto Met His Future Self Part 2 Findings. Let's begin with the story. Naruto stood very still and listened. But whoever was out there didn't say anything else. What to do? The smartest thing would be not to answer and wait for the person to go away. But, he was transformed and no one would be able to tell it was him, so what would be the harm in seeing who was at the door? It was obviously someone who knew him, and that made Naruto curious. I heard you in there, the calm voice came again. Are you hiding from Sakura for some reason? Should I pretend that I did not hear you? If yes, knock once. An expectant silence followed. Oh, right, if no, let me in. Another silence followed. Naruto's eye twitched. How was he supposed to ignore that? Besides, they already knew he was there, so it would be better to let the person in than to raise suspicions. Yes. Squashing his doubts, Naruto walked over to the door and opened it. The visitor was an older teen boy with jet black hair and eyes, and unnaturally pale skin. He wore a purple long sleeved button up shirt, with matching purple pants and black sandals. He was carrying a spiral notebook. Naruto could not see a headband, so he couldn't tell if the boy was a shinobi or not. The only thing he was absolutely certain of was that he had never seen this person in his life. If the boy was surprised or embarrassed to find he'd been talking to the wrong person, he didn't show it. He just looked down at Naruto with his head tilted slightly to the side. Oh, excuse me, he said mildly. I thought this was my teammate's room. Teammate? Naruto echoed. Yes. Uzumaki Naruto of Team Kakashi, under the command of Hataki Kakashi. I was under the impression these were his living quarters. The boy's voice never seemed to vary in tone, but kept the same light, vaguely pleasant intonation throughout. It wasn't a monotone, exactly, but it was the same type of artificial lightness one found in instructional videos and public announcements. It was unsettling. He, he left on a mission earlier this morning, Naruto said, trying to act normal. Um, the Hokage is letting me stay here temporarily while some more apartments are being built. He smiled resolutely through feebleness of his own excuse, but the other boy seemed to accept it. I suppose that makes us neighbors then, if only temporarily. My name is Sai, he said with a weird smile that didn't look right on his face. He held out a hand. It's nice to meet you. He paused, looking at Naruto very intently. Crap, I haven't thought up a fake name or anything. Naruto thought frantically. Now he's waiting for me to say something. Stupid face, Sai said finally, and he gave his weird smile again. I hope that we can be good friends. A silence fell. If one listened closely enough, they could hear the snap of his self-control breaking. What did you call me? Naruto bared his fist. It's no more stupid than yours, with that creepy-ass smile you've got. What's your problem? Sai laughed sheepishly, which made him seem a little more human, but only made Naruto more confused. No good, huh? He glanced at Naruto and then away, scratching his cheek. Maybe Naruto and Sakura were right. I should probably stop trying to give people nicknames. Eh? Now Naruto wasn't sure whether to be angry or not. Well, whatever it was they told you, I'm sure I agree with them. Sai dipped his head. Sorry to bother you. He made as if to leave. Wait, um. Naruto started. Here was a person that didn't know they weren't supposed to tell him anything. If there was any way to get information out of him, Naruto wanted to try it. Yes? Sai said curiously. Um, if you wanted to leave him a message, I could pass it on, if I see him, I mean. I don't know when he's coming back, Naruto said. It's nothing really important. I was just going to ask him about yesterday when he disappeared from the ramen shop. I'm sure Sakura knows what happened, so I'll just ask her. Where is she? Naruto asked before he could stop himself. He winced internally, hoping it wasn't too odd of a question. 
She's been spending the majority of her time with the medical corps lately, though she's probably doing work for Hokage-sama this time of day, Sai said. Do you know her? Not, not really, Naruto said kagali. I mean, I know of her, I know who she is, but she doesn't know me. Sai stared at him for a while. He may have been surprised his eyes were just a fraction wider, though it was hard to tell, but then the corners of his lips lilted slightly. It was a much fainter but much nicer smile than before. Oh. Is this what they call having a boyhood crush? I read about that in here, Sai said cheerfully, pulling a book out of his pocket and for one horrible second Naruto thought it was Aika Aika but it was titled Making and Keeping Long-Term Relationships. Although, I'm not sure if she'd be interested in a puny little shrimp like you, Naruto's eyebrow twitched, this guy seemed to have a knack for saying inflammatory things in the most pleasant of voices, but at least, you're pretty brave for liking someone scary like her. Forget I said anything about it, Naruto said loudly. Already failing to keep quiet, I see, Kakashi said cheerfully, appearing behind Sai's shoulder. Did you find out something? Naruto asked instantly. Kakashi gave him his infamous dead eye look. You do realize there's almost no chance the message has even reached them yet, right? We only sent it a couple of hours ago. How the hell was I supposed to know that? Naruto grated. I was just going by what you said. What were you doing, then? Oh, nothing, Kakashi said lazily. Just got the boss to spring you from your prison cell. You're welcome. What? Really? So wait, that means I don't have to stay cooped up in here? How did you manage that? Um. Sai shuffled to the side to get out from between Kakashi and Naruto. I'll just, go. Wait. Kakashi caught his arm. I need to tell you about your new mission. Come in here for a minute. Looking bemused, Sai allowed himself to be led into the room and Kakashi shut the door behind them. The Kapinin settled down at the table and Sai and Naruto followed his lead. I'll make this quick, Kakashi started. Right now, I'm heading out in the second wave with my Nin Ken to help with the scouting. In the meantime, we think that it's safe within the village's boundaries, or at least, it's no safer in this room than any other place in the village, he smiled. At any rate, we still need to be very cautious until the investigation is complete, even if there is no particular point in keeping you in here, specifically. I don't understand, Kakashi-sensei, Sai said. I'm putting you on the same protection mission I have, Kakashi said. It will only be C rank in terms of difficulty, I hope. But it's A rank or higher in terms of importance to the village and the level of danger, if it appears. The two of you need to stick together like glue until I get back. Sai looked at Naruto and then back at Kakashi. I'm sorry, I still do not understand. I don't think an A rank is any place for a genin even if it is easy for the rank. He's not going on the mission with you. He is the mission. I don't need a babysitter. Naruto growled. Who is this guy, anyway? He acts like he's from our class or something, but I don't remember him at all. Is he really on our team? It's a long story, Naruto. Can we just focus here? You need someone competent with you if you're going to be allowed any freedom at all. Get over it. Naruto? Sai said confusedly, staring at Naruto. Listen up. And don't interrupt me again, squirt, Kakashi added with a pointed look at Naruto. Sai, I don't have time to go into the whys and hows, we don't know all of them anyway, so just go along with it for now. This kid is Naruto. He gestured at Naruto. Tsunade put a hinge on him. The reason for that, and the reason he doesn't know who you are, is because he isn't the Naruto you know. Someone used a kind of summoning or space-time ninjutsu we don't know about and brought him from the past into our time. He is Naruto from four years ago. Sai's eyes were definitely noticeably wider this time. That's. He looked at Naruto. Very bad. Kakashi supplied. They wouldn't do something like that without a reason. 
Fortunately, it seems they didn't have very good control over where they brought him, because he ended up close to the village and still managed to get here without being attacked. Unless that was their intention, Sai pointed out. Right. Kakashi sighed. It's risky, but I'm glad he's not out there. At least here, there are lots of other shinobi around, and he can blend in with the henge. But I need you to stay beside him while I'm gone helping with the investigation. Kakashi's eye crinkled. Tsunade-sama might be in trouble once the elders find out, but fortunately, you're a good choice for this mission. You can quickly send information or an SOS to the Hokage if necessary. I will also leave Pakin with you. I'll reverse summon him if we find anything out there. Kakashi bit his thumb and went through some seals. Kuchios no Jutsu a pop and a puff of smoke revealed the diminutive pug sitting attentively on the table where Kakashi had slammed his hand down. Leave it to me, I'll keep an eye on them, Pakin said, saluting with a paw. Pakin! Naruto said happily. You haven't changed a bit. Pakin looked over his shoulder at Naruto. You have, though. Are you really that short, or is it just the henge? I don't remember being able to stand eye to eye with you. That's. I'm sitting down, and you're on the table. Naruto jumped up to demonstrate he was still, at least, taller than a dog. Sai laughed. Naruto shot him a disgruntled look, but didn't retort. It would have been easier to react if the laugh had been distinctly mocking, but it wasn't. It was genuine and warm. No, you really haven't changed all that much, Sai said. Actually, I'm surprised I didn't figure out who you are sooner. That was certainly discomforting, coming from a complete stranger. Sai tilted his head thoughtfully. Though I wonder if at a younger age, you have even less of a... Okay, Kakashi cut in neatly. Another thing, Sai, is that while this isn't exactly a secret, we want to keep it quiet until a decision can be made by the Hokage and the others. That is also why you're a good fit for this. I doubt it will be necessary, but if anyone asks, he's a survivor from Ruth that you're mentoring. Ah, Sai gave an understanding nod, but Naruto was completely lost. That is good. It won't be necessary to explain his lack of a background then. The knowledge of most of our true identities died along with Danzusama, after all. Right. Naruto's personality doesn't exactly fit that, but it's all for the time being anyway, while the higher-ups have their meeting. Kakashi stood up. By the way, Naruto, before you go out, I have to warn you. Naruto sighed. I'll behave. And I won't run off. I just want to see things and help the village if I can. Even I can tell this isn't a good time to be pulling jokes. True, but that's not what I was going to say. Your cover might not fool everyone here. Still, you need to try to act normal, even if you see or hear something that surprises you. Can you do that? Naruto nodded cautiously. I really mean it, Kakashi said dryly. You need to stay calm no matter what, or we'll have no choice but to hide you in an underground bunker until Akatsuki goes away. And if Sai tells you to run, or stay out of a fight, you need to do that without complaining. You're making me nervous, Kakashi-sensei, Naruto said with a quavering laugh. Is it going to be that risky just to walk around a little bit? Probably not, Kakashi admitted. But never forget that capturing you is one of Akatsuki's objectives. Don't draw attention to yourself. If they attack the village again in the state we are in, there's a good chance they'll succeed in taking you. He I smiled, but his words gave Naruto a chill. Okay, okay, I get it, he mumbled. Great. We can't keep you in the dark about everything, but... Sai, try to keep him out of anything that's too big to be dealing with right now. He says that he left the night of Tsunade's inauguration before. Kakashi didn't finish the sentence, but his hand gave a strange deliberate twitch, like a hand sign, only it wasn't any Naruto recognized. He barely saw it, but Sai looked very grave and nodded. Understood, he said. Be good and stay out of trouble, you three. 
later, and Kakashi disappeared with a puff of smoke. Kage Bunshin, Sai said. They must have already left. Yep. Pakin raised his paw. They were ready to go as soon as Kakashi showed up. He didn't even have to give Hokage-sama his puppy dog look to convince her. They're both so soft on the brat. Feeling awkward and unsure what to do, Naruto walked over to the trunk and started putting away the clothes he'd pulled out. So? He started slowly. Why are they sending out a search right now? I mean, what are they looking for? Sai watched him impassively, head tilted slightly. It's safe to assume if someone deliberately brought you here, they would be looking for you. If that person knows where you first appeared, they are probably heading there now. If we send forces there, then maybe we can catch them. Naruto snapped the trunk closed and stood up fully to frown at Sai. What? Sai asked. I'm sorry, I really can't figure you out. Naruto scratched his head. Are we, friends? In this time, I mean. We're comrades. We're comrades, but we're not friends? Naruto crossed his arms, unimpressed. Boom. Sai shifted uncomfortably. It's not that. I'm not entirely sure how the friendship thing works. If it makes you feel any better, though, I think the older you would say we are friends. I've been reading up on it, he tapped his pocket but I've come to the conclusion that learning will take time. Oh. Naruto thought about it. See, this whole time I've been trying to imagine, figure out what kind of person I am in the future. Not that I mind having more friends, but I don't get you. Sai shrugged and laid his notebook flat on the table, smoothing the cover. Back when we first met, I thought it would be easier to interact with people if I put on an act that kept them from caring about me. So actually, you hated me. He started absently flipping through his notebook. Now that it was open, Naruto could see that it was actually a sketchpad, and he walked over to get a closer look. Sai paused on a pastel drawing that didn't look like much of anything, just a swirling mass of different colors. He tapped it with his finger and smiled. Sakura punched me really good in the face once. Naruto winced. Yeah, I know what that's like. Sai shook his head, closing the sketch pad. Do you? Anyway, after a while, I decided to drop the act and be myself. So we get along pretty well now, he offered a small smile over his shoulder. So you like to draw? Yes. It's also part of my jutsu. I can show you sometime if you want, but aren't you interested in seeing the village? Yeah. What Kakashi-sensei said freaked me out a little bit, but I want to see how things are going after the attack. I didn't see much when we were walking here. Sai nodded and stood, tucking his sketchpad under his arm. Is there anywhere in particular you want to go? If you're hungry, they just reopened Ichiraka's not long ago. Naruto's stomach growled at the thought. He didn't have to ask how Sai knew it would be a tempting offer. Strange but it was pretty convenient to meet someone that already knew him. Ah, now you're talking. I haven't had any lunch yet. It's good to know that Ichirakus is still around. It wouldn't be right otherwise. Operation Learn About Kanoha of the Future was about to begin. It just so happened that the ramen bar was as good a place as any to start. I love the new place. Naruto gushed as he settled in on a stool. It looks like it's been expanded. Thank goodness the menu is the same, though, he added, looking over one of the signs hanging up. Oh. Thanks. Tucci looked up from his chopping to smile proudly. It's thanks to Naruto that I was able to reopen so quickly. He wouldn't rest until Yamato-san made it a priority. What can I get you? Naruto's grin was a mile wide. A large tonkatsu miso with pork cutlets please. Oh, with some eggs too. Same for me, Sai said. Sure, Tucci said. He tapped the blunt edge of the knife against his shoulder contemplatively. Sorry, I don't remember seeing you in here before, 
kid. What's your name? Tucci had a sharper memory for faces than any ninja. He made it a point to keep a rapport with all of his customers. It's, oh, um. Shinji, Naruto mumbled out. He glanced at Sai nervously. Apologies, Tochi-san, Sai took over. He was en route. That group, huh? Tochi said with dark understanding. If it wasn't bad form to speak ill of the Hokage, even just a candidate one. He muttered and turned around to start his work. Seeing that it had been so easy to deflect suspicion at the simple mention of Root piqued Naruto's curiosity. Kakashi's lazy attitude had given him doubts, but it really seemed to work. What is this Root thing, anyway? Naruto whispered to Sai behind his hand. Later, Sai said. After they got their ramen, Naruto ate quietly, turned halfway in his seat to watch the street through the open doors of the shop. Plenty of new questions occurred to him while he was sitting there, but he didn't want to ask while Tucci was working in the background. Pakin was staring at him none too subtly, and Naruto gave him a few pork cutlets from his bowl. I wonder if they found anything yet, Naruto said. Nothing worth summoning me back, anyway, Pakin said. And I don't hear the village sirens going off either, so that's a good sign. Maybe it wasn't anyone after all. Maybe it was just a freak accident. That seems unlikely, Sai said. He put some coins down on the counter. You don't have any money on you, do you? Naruto made to pat himself down, then remembered that he'd traveled to the future in his pajamas. Ah! Crap, I forgot about that. Sorry. I can pay you back if you think they'll let me pick up a few D rank missions around the village or something? I should help work while I'm here, anyway. It's no problem. Sai counted out the amount for Naruto and put it down. Then he turned and strode out. Naruto trotted after him. Would you like to visit Sakura? Sai asked suddenly. Eh? Would that be all right? I mean, I'm not gonna complain if you're suggesting it, but... It should be. I'm not certain, but I believe Kakashi-sensei gave you those warnings because he knew you would want to say hello to your friends. This way. We'll check at the medical corps first. Naruto caught up to him. If you say so. I want to see how strong everyone's gotten. I can't tell you much about that, since I only joined your team this past year. I do know that Sakura couldn't have started apprenticing under Tsunade-sama until after she became Hokage, so I suppose that might be different. Sakura's apprenticed under Tsunade Bashan? Naruto said curiously. How so? She's a medic nin now, Pakin said. Our little Sakura-chan has gotten to be very reliable. That's awesome. Naruto grinned. But, something confuses me, Sai. I didn't understand when you said I was your teammate, but all that with Kakashi-sensei, and just now, when you said you joined our team this year, are you saying you're really a permanent team member? How does that work, when we've already got our team 7? Sai was quiet for a moment. Pakin looked up at him, but didn't say anything either. Team 7 as it was, a training unit under a Jounin instructor, no longer exists. Now we are Team Kakashi, which, while maintaining the structure of the original Team 7, is a regular unit that's subject to adjustments as necessary. For example, sometimes Yamato Taishu takes command of the team instead of Kakashi-sensei. Right now, Yamato Taishu is with the older Yu on the way to the Lightning Country. With those two gone, and Sakura spending most of her time working for Tsunade-sama, our team is a bit scattered at the moment. So where's Sasuke? Naruto pointed out the obvious omission. Sai laughed nervously and Pakin bit him on the ankle. Ow. Ah, uh, um. I don't think I should really get into what he's doing out there, but the last correspondence with him was near the Land of Iron. I believe you, Sakura, and Kakashi-sensei met with him there not long ago. He's on some kind of secret mission? Without us? Typical. Something like that. 
Sai studied the row of new shops across the street. I really can't say anything about it. So, why Shinji? Ha! Huh? The fake name you gave Tuchi-san. Oh. Naruto shrugged. It was just the first random name that popped in my head. It's the name of some jerk I met on the way here. Ah, that makes sense, Sai said without the slightest hint of irony. I just thought it was funny that you chose that, since it reminds me of my older brother. His name was Shin. And he was in root, just like I was. Again with the root? What is it? Later. You're doing this on purpose. Kakashi found it easy to retrace Naruto's steps back to where he appeared. He mostly stayed on the road, after all. Kakashi and his ninja Han Shiba led the way with a small group of ANBU behind them. When they arrived at the tiny farming village, they held back, hiding in the trees to observe. They already found the place where Naruto had emerged from the woods to look down on it. Kakashi's eye narrowed as he scrutinized the place from up in his tree. It just looked like a normal, peaceful little hamlet. Most of the residents had left to lend their carpentry and building skills to Kanoha. Only a handful remained to tend the crops. They had suffered no collateral damage from the blast that had destroyed Kanoha, so there had been no need to stage a cleanup here, nor had there been any reason to keep the Chunin who was stationed there. It was vulnerable, but not at risk. Until now. Kakashi touched the microphone on his neck. There's no one in the fields or on the street. The whole place looks like a ghost town. Proceed with caution, Boar's voice sounded in his ear. I will back you up. Raven and Tiger, stay in the trees and out of sight. It doesn't look like much is going on here, but we won't know for sure until we can make contact with some of the residents. Kakashi heard the other two give their affirmative and he jumped down from the tree and sprinted through the grass, Shiba bounding beside him easily. He heard Boar behind him, his steps a faint whisper on the ground, surprisingly quiet for a man his size. Shiba's nose was to the ground. He sniffed along the street and paused beside one of the fields, giving it several sniffs and turns. Naruto met up with some people here, the Ninken said. He trotted down the street a little more and ambled over some freshly plowed earth toward a house on the edge of the field. Looks like they went in there, he raised his head to stare at the house. It was a simple wooden structure like all the others. It couldn't have held more than one or two rooms. Kakashi could see a small tendril of smoke rising from the chimney, which meant someone was home. He strode up to the house and knocked on the front door. There was no response, but at this point he hadn't really been expecting one. Something here felt very wrong. Is there anyone in there? He mumbled to Shiba. Kakashi's own nose wasn't all that bad, and he knew what it was telling him. Still, it didn't hurt to have a second opinion. Yes, Shiba said with certainty. How many? Three. No enemies. I don't think. Kakashi opened the door and walked in cautiously. He saw that the fire in the hearth was really nothing but a collection of cinders. A pot of stew was over it, still warm. He could smell white rice and daikon and beef. And there were three bodies splayed on the floor. They were lined up all in the same posture, knees slightly bent and their hands tied behind their back. An old man, a young man, and a boy. It looked as if someone had lined them up on their knees and killed them one by one, leaving them slumped over wherever they fell. Bizarrely, there were no wounds. There was no blood. Poison? Kakashi bent down and sniffed at the abandoned food around the hearth. Senpai? Bor said from the doorway. Did you find something? He came further into the room and saw the bodies. Bor uttered a soft curse under his breath and tapped his radio. We have three bodies. Move in and search the other houses. If you find anyone, don't move them unless they are still alive and need medical treatment. Prioritize the recovery of any survivors. We will regroup after searching the whole village. What do you think? He asked Kakashi. 
It isn't poison, Kakashi said, standing up from his inspection of the bodies. There's no scent of it on their mouths or food and there are no puncture wounds from a syringe. We will need an autopsy to be sure, though. The way they are tied up suggests they were restrained and kept alive for a little while before they died. My guess is that someone interrogated them. Maybe they died from some sort of mind destruction jutsu. The enemy could have realized these people had contact with Naruto, or theorized. But it doesn't seem like they were tortured for information. Why would they just kill them outright like this? If they didn't bother with asking. Kakashi said slowly, if the method of getting the information itself was the cause of death. Bor became very still. We have seen this before, but that's. Kakashi drew in a very long breath. What is going on here? The medic Nin seemed busier than anyone else. The rebuilt hospital wasn't their only place of operation, they had multiple tents set up at different points in the village for minor care, in order to save space in the hospital for only the most serious cases. They also had a warehouse currently being stocked with supplies and organized by Genin helpers. At that moment, the work there was being overseen by a single medic. Put them all in the same place, Sakura said to a Genin team that was pushing a huge wheeled cart full of wooden crates. Tsunade-sama needs this inventory report today. Just there, and go get the next one. I'll unload these. They gratefully scampered off. Sakura, Sai called. Sakura turned as they approached and her face brightened. Oh hey, Sai. Did you come to help? Nope, just came to say hello, Sai said cheerfully. Sakura grumbled and started unloading crates off the cart. She was taller and more sinewy than Naruto remembered. She had kept the cropped hair from the exam, tied with a red hitai 8. The pink hair and striking green eyes were the same as ever, but for the first time, Naruto really felt as though time had passed. She wore tall boots with a dark navy skirt and a sleeveless red vest with a light-colored tee underneath it. She was even taller than him than before. And there was something else there, too. An aura of confidence that he hadn't even realized until now that she had been lacking before. So, what are you doing? Sai said. Sakura put down another crate and straightened up, dusting off her hands. Tsunade-sama wants an inventory of all our medicinal herbs, in order to determine if we need to go collect some more. What are you doing? It's not nice for people on their days off to come taunt those that have to work, you know? I am working. I've been assigned to guard this person, Sai motioned toward Naruto. Sakura shifted her attention to him for the first time and Naruto blushed a bit as she appraised him. She looked puzzled. After all, he was still disguised. She glanced at Pakin near his feet and then back at Naruto. Who is this? It's Naruto. Sai said cheerfully. Ak. Sai. Naruto tugged on his arm. I thought Kakashi-sensei said we were supposed to be top secret right now. It's all right, Sai said. Because Kakashi-sensei enlisted me for this task, this is a Team Kakashi mission now. That is why he put me on this task, and why he suggested we go out. If he doesn't say it explicitly, he can't get in trouble for it later. In theory, Pakin added. Naruto? Sakura frowned, hand on her hip. I thought you were being sent out to the Land of Lightning. Or was that just a decoy or something? Ah, he was sent out, Sai said. But this one suddenly showed up, and we might have two Narutos running around now. Sakura unexpectedly narrowed her eyes at Naruto with a hard, sharp expression he never knew she could make. It wasn't the usual blare like when he did something stupid. It was the cold, professional look of a shinobi analyzing a potential threat. I was about to take a little bit of a break, she said lightly, a tone that didn't match her expression. Let's go catch up some. She turned on her heel and walked toward the back of the warehouse. The boys followed, Naruto apprehensive and Sai as blandly chipper as ever. They arrived in a small break room and Sakura closed the door behind them. 
Naruto and Sai sat down in mismatched chairs around a folding table, and Sakura poured herself a cup of coffee from the coffee pot on the counter. All right, what is this about, she said, settling down at the table with them. Sai explained everything to her, including about Kakashi and the ANBU's scouting mission. It didn't take long and she didn't interrupt, but by the end of it Sakura lowered her head, bangs covering her face. Naruto wondered if she was about to explode. I suppose what we do about it in the end depends on what they find, Sai finished. And whether or not the older version of Naruto is still around, or if they traded places somehow, or whatever else. Sakura looked up, but she didn't seem angry like Naruto thought. Instead, she looked concerned, and she turned to Naruto, who had been mostly quiet throughout the conversation. Are you all right? she asked gently. I know all this must have come as a shock to you. I mean, with the village being destroyed and everything. It isn't exactly the future we had in mind for ourselves. It's... Naruto tried to think of what to say. It's not as bad as I would have thought, I guess. I didn't realize what a relief it would be just to have everyone survive. Oh, he sat up very straight in his chair suddenly. I have something really important to ask you. Oh? Yesterday, well, yesterday for me anyway, we were at the inauguration and Kiba was being a jerk and you had to hold me back from pummeling him, do you remember that? I think so, why? Why? Naruto slammed his hands on the table impatiently. He was talking trash about me even though I'd beat him in the preliminaries. I forgot and didn't ask when I saw him earlier, but please tell me I beat him to Chunin. Sakura blinked at him a couple of times and then burst out into full-blown laughter. Packin chuckled and Sai fake smiled out of habit. Sakura-chan! Naruto ground out indignantly. Why does everyone keep laughing when I ask that? Oh. I'm sorry, Naruto, Sakura wiped away a tear of laughter. Don't get mad at me, but, technically, you are still a genin. You are the only one of our age group registered as an active Kanoha Nin that is still a genin, Sai offered helpfully. What? Naruto said, stunned. You didn't have to say it like that, Sakura smacked Sai on the back of the head. I'm not the one who was laughing at him. Naruto watched their bickering, fingertips lightly touching the table and halfway out of his chair. Had he completely misunderstood something? He racked his memory. Everyone said he faced the Akatsuki member that had destroyed the village, right? But Kakashi had also said that he didn't actually beat him, that he'd sacrificed himself after being convinced to give up. That didn't really mean that Naruto was necessarily powerful at all. After all this time, he was still the dead last, the only one in their group still a puny genin? Ma, Naruto, Sakura said as Naruto hit his forehead on the table. You don't have to take it so hard. I said technically you're still a genin. Everybody knows you're better than that. It's just the circumstances. You haven't had a chance to take the exam since the first time. Oh, really, he said tonelessly, face pressed into the table. Yeah, she answered earnestly. Take the current situation, for example. Could you imagine us holding a Chunin exams in the state we're in right now? And you've been out of the village a lot, training, or out on a mission at all the wrong times. It's just a coincidence, I promise. Then, how strong am I? M.M. Sakura glanced to the side and rubbed her arm. I don't think it would be a good idea to tell you a lot about your future self. What if it changes something? Besides, you should already know that you are strong. Aha, uh -huh, he crossed his arms, dissatisfied. Since you guys are just waiting around, come help me unload some boxes, Sakura said, standing and rinsing her coffee mug out in the sink. We're short-handed anyway. Giving a defeated Sai at the change of subject, Naruto followed her out with Sai and Pakan. They only barely made it out of the break room before Sakura stopped dead. Kanoa Maru, she roared. What do you think you're doing? The others looked around Sakura curiously. 
Mawegi and Udon were unloading crates, and two Kanoamaras were pouring the contents from one barrel into another barrel. They were all wearing Hitai 8. They were all Genin. And all of them were currently frozen in place, staring at Sakura. Th this barrel was almost completely empty. Kanoamaru said defiantly, but with an undercurrent of nervousness. I figured it would help save space if. Idiot. Sakura raged, punching one of the Kanoamaras. The clone disappeared in a puff of smoke and the barrel fell to the ground. You can't mix random medicinal herbs. Now this stock is unusable. Why, Sakura Nichin. Kanoamaru cried, reeling backward as he dodged another punch. I'm sorry. Kanoamaru Kuen. Moegi sighed, doing a facepalm. Oi. Squirt. Kanoamaru. Naruto called, running into the scene eagerly. Kanoamaru stopped in his retreat long enough to glare at him. Who are you calling Squirt? You're smaller than I am, Kore. With dismay, Naruto realized that he was right. Shorter than Kanoamaru. This was what it had come to. No, he was almost certain that he would be the taller of the two if not for the henge, at least by a few centimeters. If he could just dispel it. Never mind that, Naruto said out loud, trying to shake off his irritation. He had completely overlooked the fact that Kanoamaru would probably be a ninja by now. There was something much more pressing at hand. Let me see your oirope no jutsu. Eh? Kanoamaru stopped to look at him in confusion. Naruto didn't notice Sakura stalking toward him until it was too late. With a vicious cry of Shinaro, she reared back and planted her fist into his jaw. Naruto flew, skidded a few times across the warehouse floor, and finally rolled to a stop against a stack of crates all the way on the opposite end. Sai had been right to question Naruto's experience. Sakura definitely hit harder than before. 10.0, Sakura Nichin, Kanoamaru chirped. Ow oh, wow, what the hell? Naruto groaned, sitting up and rubbing his jaw. Sorry to interrupt, everyone, Sai said, stepping in between Sakura and Kanoamaru before more bodies went flying. Sakura, Pakan just vanished. Kakashi sensei must have summoned him back. That's the signal that they found something, right? Do you think we should go back to the boarding house to wait for him? Sakura said. We will go, Sai said. You should finish up first. I don't think Tsunade-sama would like you skipping out. Ugh. You're right. But send me a message if Kakashi sensei shows up. I'll be over as soon as possible. Naruto had dragged himself back to their group, still rubbing his face and muttering under his breath. Sakura sighed and reached out toward him. Naruto winced, but she just placed her hand on the side of his jaw. A moment later her hand glowed with green energy and the pain and swelling faded away. You're blushing, stupid face, Sai observed with interest. S shut up. I am not. Sakura just rolled her eyes as the two walked away, Naruto shooting venomous words at Sai with no effect whatsoever. What was that all about, Kore? Get back to work. Eep. Yes, Sakura Nichin. Hours later, they were still waiting. Naruto thumbed the edges of tail of the utterly gutsy shinobi. He'd taken it to try passing the time, but ended up fidgeting restlessly instead of reading. There was something slightly awkward in this atmosphere that made it difficult to focus on anything. Sai was sitting at the small wooden table across from him, sketching peacefully. He had changed into a more battle-ready gray outfit, complete with hitayate and implements for his jutsu, just in case they got called out. Sakura was sitting in the sill of the open window gazing out at the darkening sky, an occasional breeze lifting the ends of her hair. As weird as Sai was, at least he was an unknown to him from the start, and he seemed way more forthright when answering Naruto's questions, even if he still didn't give away very much. Sakura was just, odd. She deflected even his most, relatively, sneaky attempts at getting information out of her, 
and he couldn't even get a read on how she felt about him being around. Whatever she thought, she was doing a good job of keeping it to herself. Naruto's attempts at conversation had puttered out a while ago. Things were quiet, peaceful, and grating. He should be back by now, right? Naruto blurted out. It has definitely been enough time to get from there to here. Sakura turned her gaze from the street to Naruto. Maybe, but if they found something, it's possible they had to investigate it a little more. Besides, you know Kakashi-sensei likes to take his sweet time when people are waiting for him. Yeah, Naruto grumbled. He perked up suddenly. Hey, hey, Sakura-chan, did we ever get to see under his mask? Does he have big teeth, or what? Sorry. At this point I think it'll never happen, Sakura waved a hand. He'll probably take it to his grave. Figures, Naruto leaned his elbow on the table and cradled his chin thoughtfully. Is it really true that he died during the attack on the village? Where did you hear that? He told me. And the guy who did it had a super crazy revival jutsu and brought everyone who died back to life. If he told you, why are you asking me? Naruto scowled at her. I thought you could tell me more about it. Like, how it happened. Why I wasn't there to stop it. Sakura bit her lip. I'm sorry, but if there's any way we can reverse this and you go back to your own time, if you know too much. But it would be good if I used that to keep people from getting killed, right? Naruto pressed. It's not your responsibility. We've already relied on you too much. Sai stopped sketching and watched their exchange with unreadable black eyes. What do you mean? Naruto said, slightly hurt. Don't you trust me? It's not like that. It's dangerous to meddle with time. Haven't you ever watched late-night made-for-TV films? No. I'm a growing boy who needs plenty of rest. I go to bed at a reasonable hour, Naruto said virtuously. And you don't watch anything that could have ghosts in it, Sai added. W.I. would I care if something has ghosts in it? You're scared of them, obviously. You would rather camp outside than willingly go into a potentially haunted house. Naruto HMPF ad obstinately. You piss me off, you know that? And all was right with the world, Sakura said with fake brightness. What about him? Naruto jerked his thumb at Sai. I'm not supposed to know him yet. Aren't you afraid that could change things? Maybe, but, back then, he was en route. Right, Naruto said flatly, putting his chin back on his hand. Because that explains everything. A smart rapping came on the door and everyone jumped slightly. None of them had heard or felt a presence out in the hallway. Finally, Naruto jumped up. Wait, Naruto, Sakura slid down from the windowsill. Let one of us, but he was already opening the door. The first thing he saw when he opened the door was a plain black cloak. His eyes trailed up and fixed on a pale face with fine cracks running through it like an ancient porcelain doll, framed with black center-parted bangs. Set in this face were terrifying eyes, black scara and red irises with three tomo marks in each of them. No way, Naruto said, stunned. A kunai slipped into Uchihai Tachi's hand and Sai pushed Naruto hard in the chest to force him back. Sai used the other hand to block Itachi's strike with the tanto strapped on his back. Naruto stumbled backward and ran clumsily into the corner of his bookshelf, but he barely registered the pain. Sai and Itachi locked eyes for a brief moment, before Sai suddenly stilled and crumpled to the ground. The proportions of red and black in Itachi's eyes melded and shifted back from the strange form they had taken. He stepped over Sai's prone form into the room. S. Sai. Naruto choked out. He pushed off from the bookshelf and formed a sign. Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. His chakra was fully restored, but still felt slippery to control. He managed to summon two stable clones. The first one rushed Itachi as a distraction. Naruto held out his hand to the other to begin molding chakra on his palm. 
The first clone was swiftly dispatched with a spinning kick. When Naruto couldn't feel the Rasengan forming, he glanced at the other one, only to see it staring at him with a sadistic grin on its face. W.H. The clone lunged at Naruto and grabbed him from behind, looping its arms under his and locking its hands together behind his neck. The joke's on you, boss, it said. Itachi was steadily approaching, and a kunai slipped into his hand again. Naruto tried to wiggle out of his own clone's grasp, but it was no use. He could only watch as Itachi reared back and plunged the knife into his heart, blood springing free from his body and splattering on that impassive face. He screamed. Wake up, Naruto! He gasped and blinked. Sakura's hand gripped his shoulder firmly. He had you in his genjutsu, she said grimly. Try not to look at his eyes or hands. Are you all right? Why yeah, he said shakily. Itachi was still standing at the front of the room with Sai lying on the floor behind him. Naruto decided to give it another shot. He crossed one hand over the other. Wait, Sakura hissed, pulling his shoulder insistently. I had to disrupt your chakra to snap you out of the genjutsu, and it broke your hinge. If he didn't know it was you before, he definitely does now. You have to get out of here. Naruto summoned two more clones, which were, sure enough, the spiky blonde variety he was used to. The first stood in front of them protectively with its arms spread. The second finally managed to get started on a Rasengan in his palm. Naruto. Stop. We can't just leave Sai, he said. If I hit Itachi with this to keep him busy, do you think you could reach Sai? If we have to run away, we should at least do it together. I wasn't saying we. Naruto started his charge. His two clones dispersed and he lunged at Itachi, who was walking forward slowly. The silent Uchiha didn't dodge when Naruto gave a battle cry and plunged the Rasengan into his chest. The whirling spiral of chakra met unresisting flesh and Naruto's hand went through his body before the energy dispersed into the air. Itachi's body jerked and ash-like flakes flew from the wound, but there was no blood, and he didn't cry out or change his blank expression. Confused and slightly horrified at the sight of his hand piercing through someone, something he'd only seen Kakashi accomplish, Naruto was caught off guard, and Itachi gladly took that opening. He grabbed Naruto by the throat with a bone-crushingly strong grip and lifted him off the ground. Naruto choked and kicked out with his legs, but it was no good. He remembered all too well when Itachi had used a tactic like this on Sasuke. It hadn't ended well. He had to escape. Naruto was only suspended for a moment, however. A flash of pink entered his vision, and he saw Sakura cleave through Itachi's arm below the elbow using the blade above her tool pouch. Itachi stepped back and Naruto fell to the floor, coughing. The arm dissolved into ash-like pieces and started reforming itself on the stump Sakura had left him with. What the hell is going on? Naruto coughed, his voice coming out raspy. I'm not sure, Sakura said tersely, putting away the blade and standing in front of Naruto with her fists raised in a stance. We once fought someone we thought was Itachi, but it turned out to be one of Payne's techniques. But, this doesn't look like that technique. It couldn't be, anyway, her fists tightened. I have an idea of what this is. I really hope I'm wrong, though. What do you think we should do? Itachi's arm finished regenerating and he lifted his reformed hand into a half ram seal. A wave of heavy, overwhelming pressure fell over them like a sudden increase in the pull of gravity on their bodies. The lights in the room started to dim to almost nothing. Darkness encroached on their senses. He's trying to trap us both at the same time, Sakura said through gritted teeth. Her hands and arms were drooping and her back was bending as if her limbs suddenly weighed a ton. Need to, break out of it. She tried to lift her hands to form a seal, but it was proving difficult. Damn it, Naruto muttered. He was still on the floor. He tried reaching for a kunai, but quickly remembered that everything he owned was in the past. His hand flopped to the floor uselessly once he realized energy spent from the simple movement. 
It's just an illusion, he tried to tell himself. Your body isn't really this heavy. It's suggestion. Snap out of it. The mere effort of standing was making Sakura breathe heavily, and her knees were bowing in as if they were mere moments away from folding. She gave a long inhale, squared her shoulders a little bit, and then wrenched her arm back as far as it would go with an enraged roar. When she hit the floor with her fist, it disintegrated into wood pulp and thousands of tiny splinters. Naruto closed his eyes and felt the entire world collapse out from under him. Large cracks ripped through the floor, wood groaning and snapping like broken bones. The whole mass churned and took him with it as it fell down to the level below, pelting him with debris in a heart-stopping drop that felt much longer than it must have really been. He landed on his back hard enough to evict the air from his lungs and he reflexively curled and put his hands over his head as debris continued to fall around him. Through the chaos he heard shrieks and shouts. These continued after the noise of the collapse subsided. New voices emerged and settled into a loud running hum of confusion and distress. Naruto heard a muffled cough much closer by and he squinted through his arms. Sakura was hanging over him coughing into the crook of her elbow. Her other hand was next to his head and he realized that she'd shielded him with her body. She didn't appear to be badly wounded, but her arms and face had scratches on them, and the end of a beam was propped up on her back, looking like it had fallen on her. Esakura-chan, he said through what felt like a mouthful of sawdust. Are you okay? she asked, turning to look down at him. Am I okay? he yelped. You just made a floor of a building fall on top of yourself. It's all right, no broken bones or concussion, she frowned suddenly and put a glowing green hand around his head, as if checking him for concussion. More importantly, we broke out of that genjutsu. Otherwise, we'd probably be dead. Naruto sat up quickly, and she didn't try to stop him. Apparently he wasn't concussed, though he felt a little bit like he was. Itachi? And Sai? Oi! What happened? What's going on? An explosion? Someone alert Hokage sama. Sakura stood up, wrestling a little with the beam before managing to slide it safely to the side. I don't see Itachi. He may have run away. With all these people around, not even he can take on the whole village, she said. We need to find Sai, though. He was unconscious. Naruto peeked warily over the edge of the little hole of debris they were in. They had landed in the lounge slash eating area on the first floor. Most of it was piled with debris. Everyone that had been in the building was gathering around the damage. Part of the first floor's wall had been knocked out, and a crowd from the street was also rapidly forming. Several cooks were huddled at the doorway to the kitchen. It was adjacent to the dining room, and there was no clear path for them to get out. Itachi was nowhere to be seen. He disappeared just as suddenly as he showed up. That's the end comment Raman if you got this far and I will see you in the next video.